Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Manager 2017 and our European Journeyman series with Valencia. We are now into November, we're looking to get up to the Christmas break. We did have a poor time last time out and our Champions League hopes are currently hanging by a thread after a defeat to Benfica it means that after four games we've only managed to pick up three points in the Champions League group stage. Uh, we're still in with a chance of managing to get through but we absolutely have to beat Club Bruges today. We've also got important league games because we did um, lose to Deportivo de La Coruña in the last game. So we need to take on Espanyol, Deportivo, Alaves and Granada today. Um, we also kick off the Copa del Rey against a team that I won't try to pronounce because they've got a very long name. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to get through the Champions League group stage today. I think that's my priority. If we have a quick look at our competitions, you will see we're still two points clear despite defeat in our last game. We're currently 10 points behind Real Madrid, but two points clear of Las Palmas, three points clear of Atletico Madrid, and Barcelona are all the way down in eighth place. Now, there is a possibility the Barcelona job could become available. Um, and when we started this series, we said it was a journeyman series. We were trying to win as many competitions as possible. So you guys let me know in the comments, if that Barcelona job becomes available, should I go for it? Um, because I know I'm supposed to be taking on teams with a bit more of a challenge. But if we'd like to focus on winning competitions in Spain, managing Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid or Barcelona is the easiest way to do that. We could be at Valencia a long time trying to win La Liga. So let me know in the comments what you think of that idea if the job becomes available. But for now we need to focus on our Champions League position. We are using the very aggressive away formation with two up top and Muni Ayin just behind them. Gregoric is playing despite a slight knock. I'm hoping that, that I'll be able to take him up at, off at half time, but we need to be winning the game by half time in order to do that. Berahino just alongside him. Madran is in midfield with Parejo and Envia. Gaia, Santos, Garay, and Canseo make up the back four. Diego Alves continues in goal. Babanco takes the corner for Bruges. It's cleared out by Santos, but not very well. And Parejo only finds Voss in the ball across, still with Bruges. Put in on the cross, Gregorich tips it forward. Berahino, two defenders ahead of him. He holds the play up. Not much support coming with him, but he's still going himself, Berahino. He's gone all the way through and got the goal. An absolutely crucial goal that moves us up to second in the group as things stand. Free kick for Parejo. He scored a few and he scores again. He's excellent from just the edge of the area. The fifth goal he's scored this season. Mina sends the ball inside. Across to Canseo. Now Envia finds Canseo again. He's got a player in the box but there's a foul from De Bock and we've got the penalty. Witzel steps up with the penalty and finds the bottom corner. It's 3-0 and it really would be a special comeback if Bruges managed to do what Benfica did with just 15 minutes left to go. There's a full-time whistle. We have finally, at the fifth time of asking, managed to win a Champions League group stage match. It's been absolutely horrendous up to this point. We can no longer win the group. Monaco have made sure of that, but we do have destiny in our own hands. But we need to play Monaco next. So they're the toughest team in the group at this stage. We are really under pressure from Bruges and Benfica. But a point could be enough if Benfica win the other game. But we need to make sure that we do the job ourselves. After winning our first Champions League group stage match, we now are away against Espanyol, looking to maintain our position in second place. Um, we've got a few players coming back to full fitness. Gregorich is now fit enough that he should be able to make 90 minutes. We've got Ruben Verzo coming in at right back. Otherwise, the team is pretty much the same from the last game. We have, do have Envia coming in on the right side of midfield. Parejo has moved to the left and Madran is going to play through the centre. But it's still Muniain and Barahino alongside Gregorich up top. Parejo. Sends the ball over the top. Gregorich is in and he's onside and he finds Berahino who tucks it into that bottom corner. And Berahino and Gregorich are starting to look like an absolutely dream partnership up top. Giacarini back to Javi Lopez. Gaia wins the tackle. Muni Ayin can sprint forward down the left. He's got the pace. He holds off the defender, puts the cross into Berahino. It's cleared away. Vezo loses the ball but Madran picks it up. Parejo onto Envia. Through to Berahino, in on goal, and he finds that top corner. That's 10 goals now for Berahino. Most of those have come in his last few games. Gregorich, less than a minute to go till half time. He passes it to Parejo. Ball through to Muni Ayin, finds Envia. Good save from Roberto. 
Gregoric, now Berahino. Can we get that third goal? He pushes it out wide to Vezo. Madran over to Parejo. Ball slipped inside and Gregoric with an excellent slotted finish into the bottom corner for 3-0. Parejo to Envia. Over to Vezo. Now Parejo. He's got several players ahead of him but he's lost possession. And Giaccarini can come down the left. He puts it inside to Girard. Through to Endlovu. On to Casella. That was an excellent little pass there from Endlovu. Very unselfish and it gives Espanyol a way back into this game. Javi Lopez sends the ball diagonally. Santos should get there but Giaccarini gets to it ahead of him. Puts it in and Gerard has made it 3-2. And we're looking at being turned over from a 3-0 position yet again. Gregorich fouled by David Lopez and he's going to get a second yellow card. That will give us a chance to hopefully hang on to this lead against 10-man Espanyol. Maniain's corner onto Perez's header and Berahino from point-blank range has failed to find the back of the net. There's the full-time whistle we have, with the help of a red card, managed to hang on to a crucial victory against Espanyol. There's something about this team when they look like they're going to win a match that they seem to completely switch off. Um, and from 3-0 up, that's twice that has almost happened. It happened against Benfica and it's nearly happened again against Espanyol. It's absolutely unacceptable. That said, we are still now five points clear of Las Palmas. They do have a game in hand, but we're maintaining our position in second place. It's time for our third away game in a row in this episode. This one should be a little bit easier. We're taking on lower league op opposition in the Copa del Rey. It's the first leg. We're away from home. I'm expecting a win. The players should be fresh. We've got Mina coming in for Berahino up top. Gregoric just alongside him with Muni Ayin just behind them. Then Perez, Madran and Thiago coming back into the team in midfield with Gaia, Santos, Garay and Vezo making up the back four. Canseo on the bench. Vezo in at right back. And in Mali Emiliano Martinez has come in in goal for this game as well. Perez coming forward, finds Muni Ayin, now Gregorich back again. Thiago over to Madran, Perez in a better position, slips it in and Gregorich gets onto it and finds the gap between the keeper and the near post to make it 1-0. Uri manages to put the ball in, it's cleared out by Garay, Carrillo has it. Soriano. Ball back into Uri. No Colinas. He's managed to find Carrillo. Martinez with a decent stop. Thiago's free kick. Dinked into Santos with the header who finds the bottom corner. Makes it 2-0. Leto inside to Muni Ayin. Leto again. Puts the ball over. Vezo has it in a decent position. Going into the box. Still going. Finds Bacali who makes it 3-0. It's his first goal of the season. He's been out for a long time with injury. But he's got us a goal. Ivan Gonzalez. Inside to Carrillo. Ball switched to the other flank with Soriano. He's just about managed to hang on to it. But is then fouled by Vezo, who's already on a yellow card. When you're 3-0 up and he's facing away from goal, why would you go and get a second yellow card there? He's left us with a job to do in the last 15 minutes. There's a full-time whistle. It has finished 3-0. A very comfortable victory despite the red card, giving us everything we need to have an easy road in the home return fixture. Well, ahead of that big game with Monaco in the Champions League, we do have to take on Deportivo Alaves just a few days before. We are at home in La Liga, so I'm expecting us to win. I have made a few changes. We're switching to the home formation after three consecutive victories. We're going to use Bacali on the left flank, Mina on the right flank, and Gregorich on his own down the middle. With Parejo and Perez, the two Ps in the middle, and Witzel just behind them. Then it's Gaia, Garay, Vezo, and Canseo in the back four. Diego Alves in goal. Parejo into Perez. He steps past the defender that loses the ball to Monga. And Witzel has thrown himself in two-footed and picked up an automatic red card after just 14 minutes of this game. Canseo into Perez. We could do a scoring early after losing a man to the red card. Parejo through to Mina. He cuts in from the right flank, sends the ball over to Gaia. He can send it forward and he does to Bacali who puts it into Gregorich who's hit the crossbar. Gregorich gives the ball straight 
to Deportivo, but it's worked its way outside to Bicali, who puts the ball across to Gregorich again, who's fouled in the penalty area. We've got a chance from 12 yards to take the lead. Parejo's going to step up, and he finds the top corner. He's a dead ball specialist, and he's put us in front, even though we've only got 10 men. LaGuardia is tackled by Gaia. Gregorich on to Bacali. He's got players arriving in the middle, including Perez, who has found that bottom corner absolutely perfectly. Parejo's corner into the middle for Garay. It's headed back out towards Parejo. He finds Perez, who's hit it first time on the half volley into the bottom corner, but Vezo's offside. I'm not sure if that should really have been offside. Santos sends the ball into the middle for Davison. Mionga across to LaGuardia. Vigorai to Elena. Ball coming through the middle. Now it's out left to Raul Garcia. Beats a man, finds Denvis, and that's a good finish, although our defence probably should have done better. Perez has won the ball. He's coming in from the right, puts it across, and Katabia has found the top corner on the half volley. I think that's his first of the season. He's made it 3-1. There's the full-time whistle. We have managed to get the 3-1 victory, despite losing a man after just 15 minutes at 0-0. We've ground out our fourth victory of this episode. It means we're now five points clear of Real Sociedad and Barcelona. Well, it is time for that huge match with Monaco as we look to book our place in the knockout stages of the Champions League. Before we go into the team that we're going to use today, there is a bit of transfer news to tell you about. And that is that we have managed to agree a deal for Nani to move to Milan for no money whatsoever, which means that 180 grand a week plus 40 grand in non-playing fees, 40 grand in playing fees are all going to be leaving the club, saving us between 180 and 250 grand a week, depending on how many games we happen to have to play. Um, that will save us an awful, awful lot of cash and free up a huge amount of room in the transfer budget. We've also allowed Thiago to leave, which will clear up 70 grand as well on top of the Nani money. That's at least a quarter of a million pounds a week cleared up. We did have to agree to 20 grand per week um, in the deal with Braga, but with all the extra fees that Nani was getting each week, it's a huge amount of money cleared up. And you can see that we've now got 265,000 pounds a week available in the wage budget, which is pretty phenomenal because it means that our wage budget will drop to about 1.3 million pounds a week, which compared to what you get in the Premier League is absolutely ridiculous for a team in the Champions League and sit in second place in a league table. Um, that said, we need to focus on the Champions League game right now. There's more TV money to come if we can get past Monaco. We are at home. We should be winning this. Witzel is going to play again despite his stupid red card in the last match. He's been pushed further up the field though, so he'll hopefully stay out of danger and then Villa will be taking on that defensive midfield role. Pereja rounds out the middle three with Money Ayin, Gregoric and Berahino, the dream team up top. Gaia, Santos, Garay and Canseo make up the back four with Diego Alves in goal. Parejo puts the ball out wide to Canseo. Inside to Witzel. Canseo again. Can he whip the ball in from the cross? He does. Berahino can't get to it but it's back with us. Now Witzel to Envia. Ball inside to Muni Ayin, who slips it through. Berahino has got to it. He pulls it across goal, and Muni Ayin sends it into the near post to make it 1 0. Moutinho sends it over to Sidibi. It's a strong Monaco team out there tonight. Falco back to Sidibi. Ball slipped through. Germain's got onto it, but puts it wide of the goal. Muni Ayin has the ball, sends it wide to Gregorich. We've got a good counter-attack on here. He puts it inside and Berahino from about four yards out has lashed it into that bottom corner to surely mean we're going into the knockout stages of the Champions League. Madran. Out wide to Leto. Now Madran again. Back to Leto. He's got people arriving in the middle. Sends the ball in. Bakayoko away, but Witzel's there. Now Canseo loses the ball and Villa still has it. Madran out wide to Leto. Can he get a good cross in? He pulls it back and it's cleared away again. And Villa has it. Now Witzel through to Berahino. He's looking to have a strike and he's hit the base of the post. Muniain with the corner. Cleared out by Carrillo. Berahino taking it out wide. Puts a cross in. Witzel hits the crossbar. It's cleared away by Bernardo. 
Well, despite playing the last 15 minutes with 10 men due to injury, we are going to win this game seemingly by two, game, two goals to nil with just a few seconds left. It's a very good result from the team, winning the last two matches in our Champions League group and making sure that we qualify for the knockout stages of the Champions League. That's five victories in a row in this episode. Definitely a very strong run of form going into the winter break. Well, for the final match of this episode, we are switching to two up front again. I've enjoyed the partnership of Berahino and Gregoric, and I want to end the episode with it. We've got Muni Ayin just behind them. Perez, Parejo, and Envia are all three in the middle with Gaia, Garay, Santos, and Vezo across the back four. We're not far away from our strongest 11 out on the pitch, so I'm expecting us to get a very good victory against a team languishing in the relegation zone of La Liga. Castellano into Agbo. Now Haruna through to Maki, Traore in a good position, cut out by Jose Gaia. Cleared forward, but straight to Tito. Not sure what Diego Alves was doing there. Haruna to Marquez, now Maki. Garay wins the tackle again. He's on form at the moment, but balls are just being given away left and right. And now Traore is in on goal, and Diego Alves luckily stops it. Parejo's free kick finds Madran. Ball inside to Gaia in a good position, finds Vezo of all people. The two fullbacks combining to give us a lead. Garay across to Santos. That was a heavy touch in the box, but Gregoric has the ball. Back to Muniain, spread out wide to the goal scorer, Vezo. He's got players arriving in the middle, sends it across to Madran now, who's gone for goal. That was a speculative effort and a half. Madran over to Gregoric. Just hanging on to it. Plays out wide to Gaia, who's had a very good game. He pulls it into Money Ayin. There's Envia in a good position. He goes for goal and he's found the bottom corner brilliantly to give us a 2-0 lead. There's the full-time whistle. We've managed to win six games in a row for the first time in this series. It's been a long time coming, a long slog, but it means that we're 10 points behind Real Madrid and five points clear of Real Sociedad. There's a huge gap between Real Madrid and the rest of the field. They're clearly going to run away with a title with 15 victories and just one defeat, which was by us. Um, they are by far and away the best team in this league, but it looks like we are the second best team. Well clear of Atletico and Barcelona as things stand and we're in a good position to really go on and try to win um, automatic places in the Champions League. We're not really going to win anything in the league with Real Madrid taking the title. But there's still a good chance in the Copa del Rey where we look strong and we're into the knockout stages of the Champions League. There's confirmation of that nice run of six victories in a row this episode. We're actually on a pretty exceptional run of form. If I drop it down to just that, the two really disappointing defeats to Benfica and then Deportivo um, are the only blemishes on this record. The draw with Benfica wasn't the best either. Um, but next episode, we'll finish off our Copa del Rey uh, second leg. Then we've got Athletic Bilbao, Real Sociedad, Malaga, Betis and Tenerife. That is five games I would expect us to win. So I think we're in a very good position, especially with games against Elche, Osasuna and Vigo to go after that. We could really try and close that gap on Real Madrid if we can put together a good winning run, uh, which we're currently on. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see how we get on in those fixtures. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. But until next time, see ya.